Hello and welcome to uh, the IT Soft webinar for simplifying relationships with your suppliers. Uh, my name is Craig Lindley, I'm the pre-sales manager for IT Soft UK um, and we're going to go through some slides um, and then we're going to see a demonstration. You should in the webinar module on the right be able to see a questions panel. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them as you think of them rather than saving them for the end um, and we'll, we'll answer them as we go through. It is worth pointing out that everybody is uh, muted for this, so we don't pick up any background noise within the office. Um, so please just ask questions if you think of them and uh, we'll pick them up as we go along. Thank you very much. Okay, so the, the first thing we're gonna talk about is the, the, the kind of drivers that most businesses have for invoice automation. So why would they want to implement these things? And we'll also look at why what we can do to help your suppliers here as well. So obviously you want to reduce the processing cost of an invoice. So you've no doubt seen the slides of how much it costs to process an invoice. It's always very expensive. So automating this process, you can save a lot of money, especially with ITSoft technology, which a lot of you uh, on this webinar will have already. Um, so your suppliers, they, they can also, with Supplier Portal, they can save costs as well. If they're emailing you invoices, if they're uh, uploading invoices via the supply portal, they're saving postage costs and printage costs, printing costs. Um, and you're also saving the time from opening envelopes and taking out paper clips and staples. So there's a, there's a massive reduction there. Team productivity, um, that's, numbers vary, um, but there's an average of about 30% of accounts payable departments time is spent on supplier queries. Uh, so that's suppliers for no have you got my invoice when you're going to pay my invoice things like that and there's a lot of chasing around that and it takes a lot of time if you factor in actually opening envelopes as well and preparing batches and pushing them to a scanner and things like that and putting them into mfds and all these kind of things you can see that the actual invoicing process takes up a lot of everyone's time so we we aim to reduce that drastically obviously if you can get invoices into the system quicker you're going to be more likely to meet payment deadlines and following on from that you're also more likely to be compliant with duty to report and things like that we also throughout the software we keep a full audit trail of all the invoices so if an email comes in we know the exact moment that we've picked it up and we know the exact moment that that invoice has been paid at the end so we can report on that we can tell you where you're likely to be um, you know going over payment terms for example and we can flag those invoices up to you so that's that's useful as well I mean for an and from the supplier point of view, they want to know things like, have you received the invoice? Because um, if the invoice has not been received, we can't really pay it to terms because we don't have it. Um, and obviously, if an invoice has been received, but it has not been paid to terms, why is that? So within Supplier Portal, we categorize the whole history of an invoice. So if an invoice comes in, and it's in dispute, they're, they're charging you an amount that you did not agree upon. You can see that, that will go out in a workflow in IT, so someone's gonna get a discrepancy workflow, and that will slow down the entire process. But they can see this, they can see why we didn't pay to terms, so they, they have access to full history. As you mentioned their visibility across the board, that's important for accounts payable, um, as well as your suppliers. So accounts payable, they have visibility using the dashboard, uh, they can see when batches have been scanned, uh, when invoices have been received, how many invoices accounts payable are having to touch, how many invoices are going out to the business for discrepancies when invoices are going to be paid, when they have been paid. They've got full visibility end to end. And with Supplier Portal, your suppliers also have access to this information. Um, not necessarily the same level of detail that accounts payable have, but they can see if it's received, if it's in dispute, if it's scheduled for payment, and if it has been paid. So it gives them visibility of what's happened, and they can see if you've received it. And that's real time as well. They can from Supplier Portal, they can choose to upload an invoice via Supplier Portal, they can watch it hit the system, they can see go ready to pay uh, if there's nothing wrong with that invoice within a few minutes automatically. So it drastically simplifies the entire process and gives full visibility. With an automated invoice solution as well, you reduce keying errors. So there's a lot of errors that can be entered when you're manually keying invoices, then we reduce that drastically. Duplicate payments. With inside IT soft software offering, we do detect duplicate payments and we will stop those. You can reject those back to the supplier you know, and tell them that, you know, can you stop doing this please? 
But from a from a supplier point of view, if they can see that you have their invoice, that you have received it, they're not going to send that invoice a second time, which is quite often why people get duplicates. If they've not been paid within two weeks a month, they'll just fire the invoice back at you. Um, so the supplier portal gives them visibility and enables them to stop this process. We also have fraud prevention methods in there as well. So you know, if, if it's on a purchase order, we'll obviously match them to goods receipts. We, we have lots of other checks around the fraud side as well. Um, from a supplier point of view, if they're uploading invoices through the portal, they are authorized to be sending invoices in. So effectively, they've done a level of uh, pre-confirmation that they are who they say they are. Obviously, we still do all the other fraud checks, but, but they're almost pre-authorized at that point. We also, when they upload, when, when they send invoices via email, it is possible to only whitelist certain supplier email addresses. So, for example, if you know the invoices from BOC, always come from invoices at BOC, you can just whitelist that address for that company. So there are lots of things we can do to detect and prevent fraud, um, and that's ultimately what we want to do. We want to stop any fraudulent invoices. Okay, so if we just look at what the ITSoft workflow looks like and what, what a digital workflow tends to look like, I'm just going to bring all these slides in here. So over on the left, we want to capture all your invoices. So we don't particularly care where it comes from, whether it comes from a scan, an email, a fax server, an EDI document, or someone has just taken a picture on the phone and sent it in. They're all valid methods of getting invoices into the system. So once we have those invoices, we would extract all that information we're going to validate all that information. If we look where it says no touch, ideally, if these invoices that are coming in are caught in a purchase order, we're going to match to that purchase order. And without any discrepancies, we're just going to export that to the finance system where it should be marked as ready to pay. It seems to be good receipted, no discrepancies. If there are any discrepancies, or if it is a non PO invoice, then workflows are involved. So we have standard workflows for quantity discrepancies, price discrepancies, additional costs. So for example, there's packaging or postage. That's actually not included in the net and not a body item um, on the invoice itself. So we'll handle workflows for those. And a missing goods receipt, that is a very popular workflow um, because not many people good receipt until the invoice comes in, unfortunately. Um, so any of those cases, we're gonna workflow. And unfortunately, you won't get that straight through processing. So you know. You, you do need to be good receipting when you get the goods. If we look at the top, we have dashboard, which is the accounts payable view of what's happening. Um, and more recent versions of the software, there's a new tool that supplements that called analytics. Um, both fantastic tools that give full M12 visibility for accounts payable. And if we look at the bottom, what we care about today, we care about the supplier. So supplier portal it monitors the entire process and it presents that information in a safe and secure way to your suppliers. So what we have here is what we think your organization needs or what most organizations tell us that they need. So one is a way to collaborate with your suppliers. So if you do have a dispute or if you know you do have questions, you know, why why have you only sent us five of these when we ordered 10? This can now be done through supplier portal. So all conversations can be tracked and recorded through supplier portal. So it doesn't have to be you know, confined to an email that's gonna get archived in six months and then difficult to find. All this is tracked and auditable through the supplier portal. You want to maintain a high quality of supplier master data. So you want to make sure that the bank details you hold for a supplier are the correct ones. Um, so that you're gonna pay into the correct bank and there's gonna be no, no, no no suppliers pushing back against that. So one of the things you can do in Supply Portal is we can present the master data to a supplier and they can confirm that what you have is correct and they can notify you of any changes. Reducing the time spent responding to status updates from suppliers, so they're phoning up, have you got my invoice yet? You've got my invoice, have you paid my invoice? What, you've not entered it yet, where is it? That takes up a lot of time. As you mentioned before, 30% of AP's time typically is spent answering these kind of questions which offer no value 
to your organization whatsoever. So it's a business cost that offers no benefits at all. And again, you want to avoid duplicate payments. You know, you probably have good relationships with most of your suppliers, so if you do ever pay a duplicate, you're more than likely to get that money back. But you don't want to have to go through that process. So we want to avoid that altogether wherever possible. Everyone wants to speed up processing times as well. You want to be able to report that you stick to payment terms for 100% of your suppliers. You want to make sure that if you can get uh, early settlement discounts that you take those. So it is in your interest to be saving money. If you can pay quickly and you have a cash flow to do so, you can make big savings by paying on time. So what your suppliers needs are, or what we believe your supplier needs are based on conversations we've had, marketing research we've done. Um, so they want to check that you've received their invoices. So that's the first one. Have you got my invoice? They also want to know what is happening with that invoice. I mean, for, for me personally, it's if, if I had to order from Amazon.com by just firing an email off to an email address and hoping that my product came, um, it wouldn't be a very nice experience. And that's exactly what you have with your suppliers. They fire an invoice in and have no idea. Will a payment come? Did you receive it? You know, is there a problem with it? They would like visibility of this process, just like if I log on to Amazon.com, I can see that my goods have been dispatched and they're going to be with me tomorrow. And then I can track that coming to my house. It's exactly the same here. They, they would like the ability to do that. And that's what Supplier Portal uh, offers to them. They can also see from Supplier Portal when this payment can be expected. So, you know, based on the payment terms that you have, the payment cycles that you have, they can see that. They can also see, um, depending on your finance system, you may have different levels of early settlement discounts. So, for example, if you pay within uh, pay within a week, you may get 5% off. If you pay within a month, you get 2% off. If you pay any later than that, you get nothing. They can actually see from the supplier portal when you're going to pay and what level of a discount you're taking based on um, the date you're going to pay on. You can receive information about disputes quickly. So if, for example, there's a dispute with an invoice, you can message the supplier directly. They'll get an email that you've messaged them. They can log into the supplier portal. They can see this and interact with you in real time through the supplier portal. So this is an easy and collaborative way to manage in any disputes. And again, it keeps in a nice central location that can be referred back to later. Um, you don't have to go chasing emails and you know, following things around. So the benefits of a supplier portal, we've covered quite a few of these already, but it's worth a bit of a recap. So one of the benefits is that we get visibility. So everyone gets visibility of this invoice from accounts payable uh, to your actual suppliers themselves. Understanding possible late payments. So if you are going to pay them late, why is that? Is it because you've not had the goods yet? Is it because you've had less goods than you expected or you've had more goods than expected or you know, there is a, there's a price um, discrepancy there that needs to be settled. It may be that you need to reject that invoice and get a new one or issue a credit. So all of these things can be tracked through for both sides, accounts payable and the actual supply themselves. So as you mentioned, we have these collaborative functions around invoice. So when it hits supplier portal, you can collaborate on this. You can send messages back and forth. You can share history. And they can see when it hit your system. They can see when it went out in dispute on their system. They can see when that dispute was resolved. And they can now see when it's scheduled for payment. So all this is a nice collaborative function that involves you and them. And it also means that they don't have to phone nine to five. You know, if they if they want to check at nine o'clock on a Saturday night, they can do that. They can see that you should have ten invoices, you've got nine. They can send the tenth one there and then. So it allows them to do it at their own pace, at their own time and not cost you anything. Electronic exchange of documents and data. So they can upload documents through the supplier portal. Um, we can also, in supplier portal, ask that they provide a level of information as well. So we can ask them up front to give us the order number right there and then, or we can ask them to give us the invoice number there and then before we accept that document from them. Um, we can ask for anything you like for the most part. They can also tell you about supply and master data changes. So if there are any problems with their supply and master data, they can get in touch with you and let you know. 
obviously you still need to go through due diligence. You need to make sure that you know that is correct, possibly phone someone in the organisation that you trust. Um, but it's a way for them to, to notify your changes. So here's here's a little slide. Um, we've, we've got a couple of these, which show kind of return on investment you could see from implementing a supplier portal. So just a hypothetical: if you get fifty thousand invoices a year, on your average rate of calls is five percent. So five percent of these invoices have been queried. And let's say it takes ten minutes to handle one of these queries. Odds are it's going to be quite a bit longer than ten minutes. You know, you don't have to chase someone, you can have a fucking finance system, it's not in finance system, where is it? You know, it's, it's, it's out in a workflow somewhere. So there's, there's lots of places that may be involved. Obviously, if you have digital workflows, it's easier to track the invoice down. Uh, depending on the level of automation you have in place, it may be more difficult or less. But let's say that your hourly cost per full-time employee is £20 per hour. Then what we can see here is it's costing you eight and a half thousand pounds a year just to handle queries from suppliers on five percent of your invoices so you can see that's a that's a reasonable amount of money but and and even with those kind of savings you'll be looking at getting a return on your investment for supplier portal in probably around six to eight months um, however if we just flip it another way what we can see here is we looked at only 5% of your invoices. But supplier statements are what cause a lot of problems for account payable, or a lot of their time is taken up with these. So I'm pretty sure that everyone on this call, you will get your suppliers sending you statements, asking you to reconcile, and that takes a lot of time. So let's, let's say, for example, that we've got 2,000 active suppliers. And that's very, very low. You know, I'm sure lots of people on this call are going to be upwards of 10,000 active suppliers. So let's say that for 2,000 active suppliers, 25% of these send statements saying, can you reconcile this with what you're paying us? So let's say it takes an hour to take the spreadsheet away to look up how we paid it. Is it scheduled? Do we know about it? That's not unreasonable. So again, if we're paying an average full-time employee 20 pounds per hour, the annual cost of manually handling supplier statements were 25 cents, so 500 supplier statements a month for one hour. So that's 500 times 12 months equals 6,000 at 20 pounds per hour. So that's quite a bit larger, and that's probably closer to what it's costing you in terms of, um, you know, your employees' time and the cost that they're they're, they're incurring. So as we can see, that's a, that's a massive motivator for implementing something like Supplier Portal. So not only does it keep your suppliers happier, but it saves you an absolute fortune. Okay, so we've, we've talked enough about what Supplier Portal can do. Um, so at this moment, we're just going to have a look, and we'll, br we'll briefly look at some of the functionality that we have on Supplier Portal. So let me just uh, stop my slide deck here. So I've opened my web browser and I've pointed it to the supplier portal. So obviously for yourselves, this would be uh, externally facing. So, you know, um, someone in your IT department would do all the complexities, reverse proxies, all that kind of good things. But what we're going to do is we're going to log in as a supplier and we're going to have a look at our invoices. Password. Okay, so when the supplier initially logs in, <clears throat> they're presented with a home page. So by default, this home page displays nothing. For a home page is something that you can configure. So for example, you can put messages to your clients here, you can put information to them, um, you know, any anything that you want to distribute to your suppliers, you can message them through the portal. Okay, so on the left we have a menu, um, or the supplier has a menu, and they have lots of things that they can do. So one of the first things we'll look at is we can look at 
a list of invoices that we have sent in. So what this is showing here is this is showing the supplier all invoices that they have sent in. So they can filter, as you would expect, by things like invoice or credit note, the status of the invoice. So whether it's been validated, whether it's scheduled for payment. Uh, validated means that you know it's been received, there's nothing wrong, that is a valid invoice. And it's worth pointing out these statuses can be changed. So if, if you prefer different terminology, which you may well do, these can be changed. So the, the invoice company as well, because no doubt most of you on this call work for an organization that comp are comprised of multiple legal entities. So it could be that you know this one vendor supplies invoices to lots of different parts of the organization, which are distinct legal entities. They can select the, the invoice date, so they can change the date of the invoice. They can search by due date, so invoices that are due for payment in this range. They can search by invoice number. They can search by invoice number range. They can search by amount. They can actually see the currency. So if they supply multi-currency, which they may do, you may have different bank accounts for different currencies for this vendor, so there may be some complexity there. You can see what currency they're billing in. Source is whether it's external, whether it's coming either by a paper or email, or whether that's actually been uploaded by them through the supplier portal. And when you do, here you can see the deposit date here. One interesting thing is this display document image. So the supplier themselves, if for example, they have no idea that, you know, small company, what was that for? They can actually click. Okay, this is the first time I've viewed an invoice image today, just bear with me. Please to complete. Sorry about this. Well, let's just let's just log back in. I'm not sure what's happening there. Bear in mind, this is a, a demo platform. Uh, so I'll go back to our invoice list. We have the same list as before. Let's just confirm that we can view this image over. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's the image of the invoice. So if, for example, they have forgotten what they build, or if they just want to look at that invoice again, they can bring it back and get a copy themselves. And finally, they also have the ability to query or to basically to collaborate with yourself. So let's, let's say, for example, um, we change the due date. Let's put the due date to uh, invoices that are due this month. Okay, so invoices that are due to be paid this month. So we can see here one invoice is saying in dispute. So what we could do here, for example, is say, um, what's the issue with this invoice? Will it be paid on time? In your accounts payable department will get a notification at this point. And they can also, they have a similar dashboard, but they can see every single invoice, you know, the dashboard, they can get to any invoice. They can pick up this comment and respond back to it. And because of this kind of collaborative nature, it can be done in real time, it can be done offline, it can be done outside of business hours. So all this is, is fantastic technology for your, uh, for your suppliers. What they can also do is, I've just got a list of invoices that have a due date of this month. I can export that. So I can pick this file up and I can do my own reconciliations. I can take this off, I can pass it to someone and say, look, these are the invoices that IT Soft have received from us this month. Is that everything? So at this point, they're becoming self-sufficient. They're not relying on yourselves to go looking for uh, what you have and what you don't have. They can see in real time what's actually happening on the platform. And that's massive. That, that actually stops suppliers sending statements in and asking you to do the work. So you claw back, or you potentially can claw back that 30% of accounts payable time, that 120,000 pounds that could be spent doing this job. Okay, so another interesting point, it is nice for them to be able to search for their invoices, um, you know, to see if you've received it, if it's in dispute, if it's paid, if it's going to be paid. 
But occasionally, you will get queries from suppliers saying, you paid us £47,000 this month, you're supposed to pay us £55,000. Why didn't you? They can flip it to look by payments. Um, so, for example, if we look at this first payment here, we can see we've been paid £3,840. We can see down here what invoices this payment is composed of. So, for example, this is three invoices. So we could potentially see that, okay, that should have been 5,000 as an invoice missing. So they could potentially go back to the invoice list, do a search, see that it's in dispute, and that's why it's not being paid. So it gives them full visibility of absolutely everything uh, that, that's happening. They also have some information here, so supplier information on the supplier pages. They can see what information you hold on them. So for example, your VAT registration details, actual address, bank details, phone numbers. They also can capture other information as well there. So depending on what, uh, what finance system that you have, we present more or less information based on what information you hold and want to make available to them. So it may be that you capture email addresses in your finance system. It may be that you can still capture fax numbers, things like that. So all those, all those bits of information can be presented to the user here. And obviously they can let you know if there's a mistake. We also have the ability for the supplier to upload invoices. So in that hypothetical situation, oh, you've paid three, you've not got the fourth. Uh, they can choose that you now we're going to bill so in ITSOC UK, they have to select the company that these are for here. And we can make a multiple select. So let's say we need to pay these three invoices. So on this panel here, we have a number of fields that we can make optional or mandatory. So because this can be sent now, all these fields here are mandatory. You can add more fields as well. So it covers some specific information you want, a parts number, for example, or um, you know, the month that it's due or anything that you can think of, we can get that information from them. And when they're done, would you like to upload the invoices? Yes, please. And then a little thing flashed up at the bottom to say those invoices have been submitted. And finally, when an individual from an organization registers for the supplier portal, so let's say, for example, Steve at Porter Cabin signs up, he signs up, he asks ITSoft, I would like to see my invoices. You need to validate Steve and you need to make sure that, you know, Steve at Porch Cabin is a valid customer and that you know him and trust him. And then obviously you may have Porter Cabin Leeds, Porter Cabin Wolverhampton, uh, you know, Porter Cabin York. You want to associate all those vendor IDs with Steve so that Steve can view invoices from any of those kind of vendor IDs and of course all your companies. So once Steve is registered, Steve can himself add other people from within his organization. So Steve from Port Cabin, finance manager, procurement, he can add other people into the supply portal. So at this point, he can give his accounts payable staff, his procurement staff, anybody who he wants inside his organization to be able to access the portal. And he can choose the level of, um, the level of information that these people get as well. So that's a nice powerful tool. You can give them passwords, you can generate passwords, you can set password policies. It's really, really nice for, for the client. Supply portal is relatively new for IT soft, so it's, a, it's only a few years old, um, but it is evolving rapidly. Um, the, there's lots more functionality that we're in the process of adding. Um, it's, it's in active development by R&D. There's lots of, lots of nice functionality coming. But right now, it's a very, very useful tool to give your suppliers the ability to manage their own invoices, to have complete visibility of their invoices and make them and you more efficient. Okay, so if you do have any questions, um, where we are now, we're just at the Q&A section. Um, so hopefully, People have been putting questions in here while I've been talking, um, and I'll just have a look. Okay, we have a few questions. Is there a limit on the number of vendors? There's no limit on the number of vendors that you can invite into the supply portal or that can register for the supply portal. Um, 
yep, supply portal can either be set up so you invite them. So it could be that you know there's nowhere for them to sign up. Um, you, you just send out a, maybe your top 20 suppliers, let's say, for example, your biggest suppliers. You can just invite those for a pilot, for example. Um, or, or you can give a blanket URL to everyone where they can sign up themselves. Okay, does it cost suppliers anything? Uh, no, it does not. Um, or it doesn't have to, is the answer. If you would like to charge your suppliers for using the portal, you know, we will not stop you. Um, but no, there's, there's no cost out of the books for your suppliers. Okay, implementation time. That's, that's a little bit more difficult. Um, it depends entirely on what your finance system is, um, what level of IT soft software you have currently. If you're on the latest version of the software, you use the hub, things like that. It's relatively simple to just plug and play. If you don't have some of these components and you're using older versions of the software or um, some of the more interesting ERP, shall we say, there's a bit more of an integration cost associated with that. Okay, uh, are there any more questions? If anyone has any questions, please just add them in there. Otherwise, that's that's all of the questions covered. Hang on, let me just uh, scroll down. So this questions box is quite small. No, I think uh, that is all the questions answered. So hopefully that was useful for you all. Um, if you do have any further questions, just please get in touch with your account manager. And yeah, thank you very much for, for joining our webinar today and enjoy the rest of your day.